The legacy of Alexander the Great lives on in our proud city. Even though his mortal remains rest in Alexandria's mausoleum, his great city continues to thrive. It is up to you, Ptolemy the First Sauter, to carry on with the job the noble Alexander began. Since its founding by Alexander barely 30 years ago, the city has become a powerful commercial hub, supplying much-needed foodstuffs and items of luxury to much of the surrounding area. To further its economic progress, and to ensure the safe passage of the many ships entering the Great Harbor, you should construct a massive lighthouse on Pharos Island, near the mouth of the harbor. This structure's beacon of light will guide distant seafarers safely into the harbor, ensuring that they do not founder on its tricky shoals. Important as commerce is, however, you cannot ignore the cultural and intellectual advancement of our society. Under your leadership, Alexandria can now become the intellectual capital of the known world as well. Gather works of knowledge from near and far, and build a great library in which to keep them. As sure as ants are attracted to honey, learned scholars from all over will journey to this unrivaled center of knowledge and learning. To build these great monuments, you will need to import a building material, such as white marble, that will be suitable for such great structures. And Komi, on the island of Cyprus, is a good source for this material. Lastly, do not ignore your military. There always seems to be unrest in one place or another. It might be necessary to dispatch troops to distant frontiers to protect Egypt's interest and defend her honor. Hey guys, welcome back to Lives of Pharaohs. I am Sajuk and we are going to be heading into Ptolemy's Alexandria, a beacon of light. And look at these goals. This is like a mini Hetep Senusri, population 7,000, culture 75, which means we need to build a zoo whether we like it or not. Uh, monument rating of 28, I suspect that that's two low monuments because we have to build two. Um, a massive lighthouse on Pharos Island and a library. So... Is that we've also got to get some manners. We've got to get six elegant manners. Now, you can't actually get palatial estates on this map, and I may do that just simply because Cleopatra's Alexandria, which is the fourth mission, not the next one, but the one after that, does require it, and it just simplifies that mission if I just show it to you now rather than then. Uh, prosperity and kingdom rating are both 75, so we've got a lot of 75s. This is not too difficult, and I don't think this is a timed mission, so we should be fine. Could turn on hard mode. We might also have uh, some military... But I don't think that's going to be too much of a uh, difficulty there. Uh, white marble has to be imported, apparently. We'll look at that later. Let's head to the city. Loyal soldiers rejoin us. We can build an infantry and archer fort from the previous mission. Good. We'll just pause right there. So there's the volume for the previous mission. The Tomb of Alexander the Great. If um, tomb robbers steal from it, it will actually say tomb robbers have plundered from Alexander the Great's tomb. Uh, and that can happen on this mission, so we'll not allow that to happen. So it looks as if they have built a wall and around this here, but it has pushed out all of the farmland. You know, remember there was some farmland here? It is now gone, and that means that all of the farmland is now here and here. And that means that to farm, uh, to feed our people, we're going to have to set up a distribution system that brings food from here, or whatever, and provides it to the inner area where the, the people are going to be. Other than that, nothing's changed. This, mo this little island has got a little bit bigger. And there's now a connection across to Pharos Island. And the lighthouse has to go here. You can't build it anywhere else. It doesn't count. It has to go here. And that's going to be a pain. And Alexandra's Library is a big monument. And we can put that anywhere. So I'll probably put that somewhere where I'm not going to build. Let's have a look. We've got a grain. No barley. But clay is here. <coughs> Pardon me. So we've got our own clay, we've got our own papyrus and f two food types. We don't have flax and we don't have barley anymore. But I assume that we can import that. Three gods, Rapata, Bast. And everything else is the same. So nothing really changed. We are a city palace, so that must mean we are Pharaoh. Of course we've got a zoo. We start with just shot of 19,200 demons. That is a lot of money. No burial provisions. That's good. So yeah, this is going to be a very easy mission because we have no time on it and we can build whatever we want. We've got creative freedom. Of course the reeds are down here but there's a lot less of them because this farmland has grown. So this was bigger, it's now smaller. And there's a lot more asps over here as well. There's also some reeds up here that we could make use of and this little ditch has widened. 
um, so we may use that uh, bit of farmland here. So pretty much all of our distribution is going to go here. Let's have a look at trade. So we're here at Alexandria, we are Pharaoh, uh, Ptolemy the first Soter. Athens sells wine, which is a form of luxury good we may need. They also buy grain and papyrus, that is a lot of grain and papyrus. They also buy stuff that we can't sell, white marble. Uh, actually, yeah, white marble can only be imported from Encomi. They do buy grain, uh, not really particularly useful, apart from wood. I want to just check something. White marble is very expensive, uh, 210 per block. So it's going to cost a lot to import these uh, this re resource for monuments. Biblos over here sells linen and in ivory and wood. They also buy papyrus and grain. They also buy barley, which we can't make. We can import uh, barley from Menefa as well as beer, and they buy f bricks and pottery. Well, I suppose we could do that because we do have straw and we have clay, so we can make those. Maydoom sells straw, worthless, because and they buy things we don't need. Uh, Bahari Oasis is actually the only source of game meat on this map, so we do need to trade there to get uh, the stuff for the zoo, because we have our own straw, which is not a problem, but we're going to need game meat. Eonet sells barley and flax. We can uh, trade with Eonet to get additional barley. They also sell flax, and there's nothing else south of that. What does Kyrene do? They sell pottery, worthless to buy a bit of papyrus, but papyrus isn't really much of a good this time. Because uh, it's not many people that buy it. It's only uh, Athens, Kyrene buys a smidgen of it, and Byblos. Additional trade routes I think must open up over the course of this mission. Because we don't really have very much in the way of trade here. So we will start with Mendefair. We'll sell them bricks and pottery because that's very easy to make. We can also import barley from there and start to do an import-export of beer um, to Kyrene. And we need Encomi regardless because of the, the marble. I'm not sure if we'll trade with Biblos, but we'll see. Um, we can import... How much flax can we import? I think we can only import 2,500, so we don't actually have a lot of flax potential on this map yet. I think additional tributes must open up. As far as I know, there's additional routes. Okay, so that's a plan for this city. I'm going to just build large blocks. We've got loads of money. I mean, it's not really a concern. We're going to set up a massive distribution area of uh, grain farms right here. And additional here, but we'll also have... Um, I mean, we don't have barley farms, so we can just set up as many grain farms as we want. All over the place. And we should be fine. Who's patron again? Era. Uh, okay. So, yeah, that's an outline of the city. I'm going to go and plan out a couple of housing blocks and I'll come back in once we have them all set up. Okay, so this is what we're going to go with. We're going to go for two housing blocks pretty much facing each other like this. And later we will have another two blocks in pretty much the same configuration over here. Um, it may not fit, so I'll just move the road out as needed. Now, the two forts, the three forts that we got, either the one infantry, one archer, we'll just go down here and I'll just dump them whenever I'm ready. Um, over here we're going to have our farms. Now, I'm not too sure if these will evolve into two by twos. Um, I do know that tile placement um, and tile variances and all that will affect whether these will become two by twos. If these become two by twos, I can just leave a one tile gap and it'll be perfectly fine. If not, I'll just have to move them closer and that's fine as well. It just means I don't have to have these guys wandering out here and it just simplifies everything because these could just be road stopped, like a uh, road blocked, and they will still get access and they will be safe from these things because these things don't burn or collapse. So we're going to get a massive influx of people here and we're just going to go right into it I think. Um, now I've been checking, uh, we can't really sell a lot, it's only a little bit of papyrus uh, to a couple of traders. Uh, not very many people buy it, I, I am just going to go with pottery and bricks. Now the bricks are going to be made here and the pottery is going to be made over here. Um, the reason being that the bricks are going to need the straw which is going to come from here and this is just sort of the best place for it. I mean I might do it that the, the bricks are made here and the papyrus is made here. It doesn't really matter because there's not that many um, reeds in the first place. I just realised I haven't blocked these guys in which I'm going to have to do at some point um, as are they. In fact let's just delete that bridge because we're not going over there because that's just utterly stupid. In fact, I am going to just do that. Right, they're blocked in so they can't get out. 
Uh, these guys I'm going to have to probably just quickly block in. Let's just have a quick go at blocking these ones in. Because these asps um, are going to cause problems for the... Oops, you're getting through. There. Uh, these asps will make it harder to um, harvest the reeds effectively. And given that the, the reeds are quite far away, I'm probably going to have like a connecting bridge right there so they can just go straight to it. So in that respect, I may put it there because there's not enough clay pit space here. Um, I mean, there's quite a bit, but there's also quite a bit over here as well. I'm not too sure. Either way, one of these areas is going to have bricks and that, and the other side is going to have uh, papyrus. It doesn't matter. So yeah, let's just keep on going. We just need to let the people move in, and I'll come back in once we've got everything moving in and our farms all nicely set up. Okay, so I'm doing, I'm doing some planning for the future. I have set up this little area here. And this area is going to support 16 potters and a shit ton of clay pits. Um, there's space to put down way more clay pits than that. But I'm just going to have 8 clay pits and 16 potters. If I need more, I can just build more. So uh, it's not really a concern. I'll just put it down a well there. I've got two houses, uh, two sets of houses, just in case they don't get the full loop. But that's fine. Now what we're going to do, before we do anything else... I'm just going to put down one ar uh, infantry fort right there and one fort of archers. They are academy trained so they will get right up to very bold and that's spent a lot of money but I want them down so that I have at least something in case someone asks for troops. Given that the briefing pretty much said that there uh, might be necessary to dispatch troops, it's a foregone conclusion that someone is going to ask for something. Now I'm suspecting we'll also be asked to send something by water but we'll not consider that right now. We do not have the workers for that right now. We have actually way too many people in the city, jeez. Um, let's just put down more farms at this point. Now, I think you should all be able to reach to that house. And I have worked it. They, have, they will evolve into two by twos and they are covered, so that's fine. So that's, I mean, how many great farms is this? Uh, 17 and it's the first year, jeez. Um, I hope that that is enough. Uh, that's the point still a little out of control. Let's just see. That's 73 people, so let's just put down four of these and eight of them. And there's space for another eight just in here. If I need more, I can just put them around the outside, it's not too much of a problem. And then we could just put down a pottery storage yard right there. There we go. I'm just going to delete this well because these have just evolved because of the undesirability effects of this, but it's not a problem. So we get enough people moving in, we just need to feed some people and that's not going to be a problem, but I think there's going to be a lot of requests on this map, but that's not a problem. So we've got our food going, and uh, we've also got our pottery going, so that's going to give us, well, it's going to give us income and a food source, essentially, and then we will also be able to evolve them into spacious homesteads. Now, I was checking, we can only get 4,000 barley and 2,500 beer a year. That's not a lot, and, and no, we could get actually another bit of barley from Eunet. So that's what, 6,500 barley and 2,500 beer, that may, means that we can get 9,000 beer a year. That's not too bad, but of course Eonet is going to be selling as flax, so they're not going to, they, they will sell that amount, but just over a longer period of time rather than in quick bursts, which is annoying. And of course, by the way, that uh, the way that um, imports work, they always send out free in a staggered way. So we can't abuse that little bug, where if you you could sell more than the quota, so that's not a problem. So if I get our people moved in, uh, you need access to water, which is going to be coming soon as the people wander around the block, which is fine. The flood's going to be shit, but we're not really bothered about floods because we are not using that floodplain again. There's a bit of floodplain here, but it's just too far away. So we're not going to use it. So yeah, let's just keep on going. I'll come back in if anything of interest happens. Okay, this is a very early request. This is the second year. Uh, it's only been, we've only played one year. Already we're being asked to send some food. Uh, Ionet requires 500 baskets of grain in 8 months. Now, if you've already gone ahead and done a bit of an overdoing of the grain, you should already have enough of that. Which is good that we set that up. Now our pottery is getting made. I've also put in an extra clay pit just to support that. Now I did 
go ahead and check it because I have been forgetting the, the stats. It's like we only need to make enough bricks to support 2,500 export. There's no one else that buys bricks as far as I know, at least not yet. So we don't really need a huge amount of production. So this area will be for the reed and papyrus stuff and I'll just do a little offshoot down here for a bit of clay and straw production and the, and the bricks. I've also been working about where I'm going to put the farms. Let's see if that was a ditch there. Farm, farm, farm. I could do that. A little bit of housing there. A little bit of housing there and they'll be covered. Because yeah, it's quite a bit of rich farmland right there, which is not too bad. But I don't think I'll need it because we've got a nice amount here. Um, but I will, I'll use this only if this is starting to struggle a little bit. Which is fine. So we've got quite a number of people in the city. We've got 10% unemployment. What does that equate to? 59 people is not a lot of unemployment. So let's just put down another clay pit and two potters. Now once we have filled up this yard with pottery, I will open up the tribute to Mend Effort and just sell the entire quota very quickly. I'm not too sure how many people will come through. It might be three people because the map's really big. Forgot to mention in the previous mission, the entry point is here and the exit point is always down here. So just be aware of that. Also, a lot of the farms in the centre here are quite fertile, so we should get nice big rich harvests. And with the fact that that first request is passed, I'm going to just go ahead and put down a granary right there. To go and get grain from the distant farming community. This wall basically separates your farming slums and your rich, prosperous people by the sea, basically. So everything should be going fine. We've got two full yards of grain here. They will just get through the system. I mean, how many people can we serve with this? About five. five I mean, we don't even have five thousand people yet, but we can support that amount, which is quite insane. So yeah, we've got a lot of production capacity on this one, and I think we should be doing just fine. So yeah, let's just keep on going. We'll start to feed one of the housing blocks, and we'll come back in if anything of interest happens. Okay, this is nice. Uh, we're getting 400 luxury goods from Eonet from setting off that grain. We can't accept it because we don't have anywhere to do it, but we're just going to put it right there. Now, we do need luxury goods. I, I haven't mentioned this yet, we are going to need luxury goods to get the manors. Now, looking around the map, we've got three places that will give us luxury goods right now. Kyrie will sell us gems that we can turn into jewellery. Athens sells wine. And Byblos sells ivory. That is pretty much all the luxury good potential on this map. Now, of course, if you want to get, as we're going to do, we're going to get palatial estates. We're going to need two sources. Now, I'm not too sure if I'll do Kyrene in Athens or if I'll just do all three because I don't really care, but I'm not too sure on that right now. Uh, also, I'm going to start setting up my reed gathering industry because we need to get into papyrus. I've just checked one shield to uh, Kyrene, Byblos is two, and Athens is three. Now, Athens buys grain, as does Byblos, but Athens is cheaper than Byblos. Byblos is 900, although we will need them later for some sort of linen import, and um, Athens sells his wine, and they also buy quite a bit of papyrus. So, I am going to set this area up. I'm just going to do a bit of a road like this. Now, where do we put the, the dock? We're going to put the dock... Um, let's just put the well there. Let's just do one, two. Now, I could put a bit of a dock there, but I'm also considering the fact that I want to have a lot of fishing here and here because we're going to have two food types in this, this area. We're going to have everyone fed on grain and fish on this map. And I want to have enough production capacity for us. That's one, two. And that's going to be... So let's just see. One, two. We'll just set up the, the docks like we did in the previous map. And the rest of the space can be for... Um, uh, the rest of the space can be just for fishing because that's just simpler. Um, so we'll have three, four docks. Let's just see one, two. So I'll have four docks and a shipwright just in here somewhere. And we'll just put down a firehouse on each end. And this is the luxury goods, thank you. And we'll just put down these associated required things like so. Okay. Now we are running out of money. We started with, now this is a bit of a misleading thing. The game will tell you it started with 30,000, which means that the developer went ahead and built the walls, essentially all across the map. They weren't pre-planted. 
So the, the mission actually starts with 13,000, but it's been decreased by about 10,000 by the developer building walls, which is not very really useful. Now we're going to have enough pottery. I'm just going to wait for all this to fully produ produce, and then we will open up the trade route. We've got enough grain, so we've got the, the opportunity to start feeding people. Just put that in that there, just evolve them. I have left a gap here in case I put some farms down. But I'm not sure if I'll need this, because it's only grain farms. There's no barley or flax or anything. What's the unemployment like? It's fine. So we just need to uh, let the people be fed. This block's going to get fed first, and then we can start working on our exports, which we could do right now. There we go. So we'll sell off the whole capacity of pottery that we can, and that should give us some money. Let's just keep on going, I'll come back in if anything of interest happens. Okay, so I actually worked out, it, well, I didn't work out, I just saw that we get three traders from men a fair a year. So we can max out that 2,500 pretty much in one go, essentially. And it's the same with the bricks, so we don't really need a, a lot of production for them. I love this track, and the fact that this track's playing means that this is a regular, it's like a regular Pharaoh mission. I love the track. When was the last time I played? It was Hatet, wasn't it? Anyway. So we've got all the food we need, we've got, and we've got the papyrus industry going, that's going to get going as well. We've also got this area set up which is also going to support grain export and getting a papyrus now that that's uh, running. But we're going to have to wait a bit. We do need more people. We've got another 272 willing to come in. I think I could just evolve this once this is stable, and that should be fine. So, um, yeah, there really isn't too much to do on this one. It just requires a long thought out process because we're going to have to go from um, nothing, basically, to supporting manors. And it's going to take a while. And of course, we don't have many, many export opportunities. Let's just put down this um, dock. And once it's running, we will open up the treasure to Athens and just sell surplus grain. At least that's something. So all I have to do is let this fill up with another 1600 pottery. And then when the year resets, we can just... I know it's not reset yet, but... 2,400 pottery is all I need to make a year to export. Because the next trader will come through and only buy 100, so that's not too much of a problem. So maybe I need to consider uh, stuff. City health is getting worse and plague could strike. Hmm, now why is that? Is that just because we don't have enough people being fed? I think it's just because not enough people are being fed, like these guys aren't being fed. Everyone else is covered, so I just think we need to feed the people. Um, but I'm going to have to wait for, in fact, you might just get rid of this grain. There's just too much of it stockpiling, it's just sending them back and forward, as always. Well there. And that'll evolve you. Everywhere seems to be nicely evolving into two by two houses, which is actually quite nice. Um, you are affected by the, the gatehouse, that's not really a problem. So yeah, let's just keep on going. We've got our first feedings going and we're starting to evolve our people and I'll just come back in if anything of interest happens. We're on the way to success now. Okay, so we've run out of fun, uh, funds for the first time. I was expected to sell a pottery before that happened. We get 5,000, so we've basically got, what, what was that, 25,000 demons to build the city? Jeez. That's extreme. We don't need that much production. Anyway, that little uh, cash infusion just basically means I can put down these statues. And, um, yeah. It just allows us to do stuff, basically. That's all this does. I'll come back to that later. This line here is going to be more shrine spam, and that will keep the gods happy. Or here we're getting papyrus, which is what we want. And we've got enough grain in the system that I don't really think it's going to be too much of an issue uh, keeping that going. So now I can open up the trade route to Athens and sell surplus grain. We've got like 8,000 in stock. <laughs> it's a little extreme how much grain we are making. I think I may have... I think... I just think I might have gone a little overboard. You know, this mission is about going overboard. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with going overboard on this one. Now, as long as I'm making enough papyrus to get 600 there, it means that these guys will always get 600, which is what we want. 
because it'll always send out the two cart pushers and that's what we want. We don't want them getting only 400 and the other one disappearing because that's a mess, essentially. This is about get 800 papyrus this time to take up, which is even better. So we can support basically 5,000 people. We've not even filled out. These blocks aren't anywhere near their top level. We've got 2,000 people. Uh, so it's not going to be too much of an issue. Didn't need to do that, which is not a problem. So now all we have to think about is um, essentially city growth. We don't really need to worry about anything else at this stage. And really, we've got our export running. So at this point, I just need to, well, wait. We've got 2,500 pottery product, uh, production on this one, which is not too bad. We've bought up 1,200 grain, which is good. You will fill up because the army of cart pushers that haven't delivered anything will eventually go up there, which is not a problem. And we're only going to export grain if there's actually a surplus up here. If there's no surplus there, you're not buying grain. You could just buy papyrus or something. I think we can turn on the the papyrus export with ease now. That's not what I wanted. I wanted this. So yeah, I think we're, we're going. We just need to set up a bit of a brick industry to tap that export. And then we don't need to worry about men affair ever again. So yeah, let's just keep on going. I'll come back in if anything of interest happens. Okay, so we're starting to really grow this city quite rapidly. We've got everyone up to Audrey Cottage. We're starting to provide entertainment. It's giving us unemployment. Now, I have stopped the Papyrus Export just for a little bit because this was a little bit low. I've also got ahead to open up the trade to Biblos. They buy grain and Papyrus just like Athens. Not sure if I'll uh, um, open up the trade to Encomium just yet, but we will need them for marble. But that's not important right now. Um, I have misplaced things. I wanted to put a ship right there, but I can't because I've got one tile of this in the way. We can move it though. I can just put it to here and it says to get papyrus as well. In fact, I'll probably have two of these getting papyrus and just really overdo it because we are producing way too much papyrus and we can't get enough of it up here, which is a problem. In of itself. In fact, let's just um, put these equal like this. Let's add that to getting and that to getting. And we're just going to set this to accept and we should be fine. So we are able to export pretty much 6,500 papyrus at this very moment, but we're going to focus on grain right now. That's more important. And we've got enough grain people wandering around. I don't think it should be a problem. We're a little bit low on grain, but we can uh, boost that, I think, very soon. I mean, we've got a bunch of farms here that are stuck at 100% because they didn't harvest last year, but that's okay. I think we're going to get access to employees. That'd be nice. Anyway, that's just going to be set to accepting, and they're going to go and get all the papyrus that they need, which is going to be fine. get rid of that because we don't need any papyrus here because it's sort of getting in the way. I want to put a ship right there. So we've got loads of papyrus sitting here which is good and you just went the wrong way for no reason. <laughs> okay and uh, so we'll just allow this to flood on. Yeah there we go. So we'll just get rid of that. 3,000 people we're not even trying anymore which is even, uh, even better. I'm just gonna put that there and we're gonna start to import some wood. Now we don't want to do that just yet because we don't have any money. But we are going to just sell off everything that we have. We don't have a use for bricks in this city. We can sell the, the stutter, sorry, the pottery. I don't mean to stutter, that wasn't intended. So that should be fine. We are short grain, but that's fine. There's an army of cart pushers willing to provide all the grain we'll ever, ever need to sell. And papyrus as well. So yeah, let's just keep on going. The city is growing very rapidly at this point. We don't really need to do too much. And I'll come back in if anything of interest happens. Okay, what's this? Alert your soldiers for the Egyptian army is engaged in combat at the distant city of Serapet Kadim. It requires you to dispatch reinforcements there. Now, given that this says that we only have three months, it is pretty obvious that we have to use our our troops that we got from the previous mission because there's no way I'd have had the chance or opportunity to train my own. So we'll just send off our two companies 
off on battle, they will probably succeed no problem. Um, I've also set up this little area here which is going to be for our beer production. I don't think we're going to need too much beer import. I mean we've got 4,000 barley and 2,500 there. Now if I need more in terms of uh, internet, I will just delete this and shift it somewhere else and put it near somewhere that I can connect to a dock. Probably here if anything, but I will uh, think about that when we get to it. Uh, it's not a priority right now. We're getting plenty of papyrus and that's all that matters. As long as we can sell grain and papyrus we're fine. And we're selling only surplus grain. So we're not setting this to set value, we're just letting the overseer decide for now. Now what was that I saw about an inactive farm? This farm's not working apparently, so um, I don't think it gets proper access to that uh, field, so... Well that house driver, so we are just going to delete that farm because he's not working very effectively anymore. Just delete some of that. And what I'll do is I'll just replace that with a new line of farms. We can just do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I think that's more than enough. I've also got to set this back to accepting again because they were just arming up and down here and never getting anywhere. Now that might affect this, but that's not a problem. I'll just set this to get. And you can get any surplus grain. Or if there's um, you know, if there's a huge amount of surplus, they could just go up and do that themselves, it's not a problem. As long as this has got something in it, they will go and get it, which is not a problem, there's enough food in there. So yeah, I'll just come back in once our troops are victorious, it's Cerebic Kadeem. Okay, the troops are back, they succeeded at Cerebic Kadeem, they were victorious obviously. Two losses each, that's not a problem, but I don't have any way of replacing those losses right now because I don't have a recruiter. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the recruiter... Um, I'm not going to put it there because I want to have um, two more clay pits here if I need I don't think I'll need it right now because we have far too much pottery production anyway. Um, but that's not a problem right now. I'm just going to get you to get pottery. Uh, a half will do. And um, yeah, I'm not too sure what that um, will do for us. Uh, troops are well in the day there. Kingdom rating's gone up. That's actually quite nice because we're not doing anything to get this back up um, at all. What have we made in export? 13,000 in export and imported pretty much nothing. So we are making pretty much pure profit from all the building that we're doing, so that's not a problem. I will, however, have to consider trading up more troops. Um, this on its own is not going to be enough. And I will like to have an extra infantry and arch fort. We're not going to actually be attacked, but it's just for uh, troop requests abroad. So yeah, our pottery, um, our pottery, our pot, yeah, well, pottery export is going. Um, our grain and papyrus exports are there, so we don't really need to do anything else. We're not going to trade with anyone else. Right now, um, we've got enough papyrus export going, and that should be enough. We can't even max it out, so it's the, that's the best thing. So yeah, let's just keep on going. I'll come back in if anything of interest happens. Okay, it's been a little while, but this is a little bit annoying. Uh, Maydoom is in need of 700 buckets of fish in six months. Now, I don't have any fishing industry at all in this city. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this, 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 and this. And they should get access to... Oh, wait, now that's going to block in the architect, um, which is going to be a bit of a problem. But we'll just do this. Move this along, like so. So, four of these should produce enough uh, fish in time. Now, also, uh, as a note, I have imported some wood to just set up this little island to be a warship island. So, we do now have six warships for any problem at all, and a bit of spare wood if it's needed for the monument. I'm also going to put down this little basic military industry, and we're going to, once we get an additional copper source that isn't in Komi, because I don't want to trade there right now. I will import some copper and fill out some more infantry troops. Not like as if it's going to be for any import, uh, important purpose because the next mission doesn't allow us to carry over troops anyway. But I just want to make sure we have enough troops in case we get larger distant battle requests. we have also got to add giving everyone access to pottery which is good. Now we are uh, short on grain in this granary which is kind of annoying. I want you to fill up. Uh, I think it's because of this up here which is not helping. So we'll set that to accept rather than get. And we'll just try and fill up the granary again so we can start to destabilize these houses because that's going to be important. 
also going to edit plans at the area for the remaining two blocks. I think that should be enough housing to get us up to 7,000, plus our elite area, which is going to be over here somewhere, and I think we should be fine. Now, in terms of the Alexandria Library, um, I don't think we can rotate this. Uh, no. So I will put it there. I'm going to put it there because uh, at least it's in the middle of the city. And I'm not going to be blocking anything off uh, by putting it there. I'm probably going to move this little area for beer to somewhere else like here. Uh, just because I want to have that additional barley import from EUNet later when I start to import flax. Because uh, I can't get any more um, linen potential right now. Uh, see, um, no juggling. Interesting, I don't know why that is. Anyway, uh, we're just going to keep on going. At this point, I don't really have anything to do. Hopefully, I'll get enough fish in time and we'll be able to send it off to Medium. And I'll just come back in later if anything good just happens at this point. We are just sort of working towards building up this city. There's not much else to do. Okay, troops are needed at Eonet uh, in six months. And we've just had a flooded clay pit, which is a really obnoxious event. It's done for no other purpose than to annoy the player. Anyway, Eonet is a water trade route, so I suspect we'll have to send water trade route, uh, troops, rather. So we'll just send off six warships, like so. Should be fine. Uh, also, I've got to just set up a massive fishing industry on the pretext of that particular request. Uh, this should cover it. If not, it should be fine. Um, I could just set up another couple of ones here and there all over the place as needed. Uh, I've got space for a fair dock there. And uh, we'll also have some fishing for our elite housing over here. Um, what's our unemployment like? Um, it's not doing too badly, but we are going to evolve our houses. We're just going to provide access to grain, like so. Um, kind of study class, I did fulfill this late, but it's still affected, so um, our kind of rating's gone up, which is not too bad. Now, we are going to provide everyone with two types of fish, and that's why we're stockpiling fish. We're going to have the grain, uh, not the grain, the fish granaries are going to be here. And we are going to feed all of these houses on fish. We'll have all fancy residences. If these guys are a bit unstable getting a second type of food, we will not provide them with food, that second type of food, or I'll just have another granary to do that. Still having trouble getting rid of some of this grain, but that's not a problem. Um, who buys straw again? It's Eonet, right? Yeah. I'll we'll have straw go up here, I suppose. Just fill that up with straw. And we should be fine. Just to get rid of it. And uh, we don't really need bricks anymore. I suppose I could always have straw down here too. And you could just be set to get whatever straw happens to remain. And we should be fine. So yeah, we'll set off all our troops. This should be fine. We're not going to connect these over here. We're just going to leave it empty, which is fine. So we'll start to produce some fish. Start to stockpile that and hopefully start to feed our people two food types. Which I think should be good. What's our gods like? Ra's still upset for some reason, so I think it's time for the big shrine dump. And that's a good thing that we set up all of this, because we can just do that right here. Like, so we'll just spam as many shrines as we can. That brings it up to 22. And this little area over here, I am just going to get rid of. We don't need it. And I want the additional uh, barley from Eurit. So I'll probably just set it up here. So yeah, we're just going to keep on going. There's nothing really to do now. I'll wait for the troops to come back. And I'll just come back in if anything of interest happens. Okay, these requests are getting a little bit annoying now. Uh, 1100 beer in six months. We don't have a beer industry. Um, and I was actually just thinking about setting that up fairly soon. I'm just going to turn off the papyrus export for now because we seem to be a bit short. Um, yeah, we are short a bit of reeds for some reason. I think we are just starting to tap out all the reeds. Yeah, we just can't make any more papyrus now. So I'm just going to let that stabilize. Um, so what we're going to do is... And I flames. Oh, how did that burn down? Oh, it's because it didn't evolve into 2x2. Two two. That didn't help. Uh, so put that out and um, I'll just have to find someone else to put that housing in. Uh, let me just see. Let's put it there and see if that works. Uh, I could put a farm right there but I could always just um, remove it. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do that. Like so. And you should get access to housing that way. 
Um, I have increased grade production, I think I showed you that, but uh, we are just short on food in this yard. I'm also going to stop the export of grain because I just don't think we can um, keep that going. Um, we're just selling too much grain and it's sort of causing food issues, which we don't really want. Uh, you've been nicely evolved. Uh, the reason I have moved this house, it was there, but I've moved it here because I want to set up this area to be my beer, produ uh, beer producing area. Now I believe we can import beer, so we're just going to import the uh, required amount. How much was it? 1100. Um, let's just put that here. Just accept the 1100 beer. Someone will import it and that will uh, meet that request. There we go. Okay, so we'll not import any more beer. That was close. We just about ran out of time. But there we go. Uh, let me just see one, two, three. I think that's about right. And we'll set this to get half beer. And that should fit in there. So yeah, so I have a double granary here, which is going to be fine. And uh, what we'll have is, uh, we'll, just, we'll sort out things later, it's not a priority right now. This should be set to accept fish, like so. We've got lots of fish, which is going to be good. But I am going to have to sort of consider taking down this unemployment, it's a bit high. So yeah, let's just keep on going, nothing interesting really happening now, just a few odd requests here and there. And it's just sort of... Coming into its own quite nice. Now, we are short on reeds. We really are short on reeds. So let's just keep that export papyrus off for now. Yep, let's just keep on going. Okay, more troop requests. Alert your soldiers for the Egyptian armies engaged in combat in the distant city of Gaza and requires you to dispatch reinforcements there. Send troops in three months. Now, what kind? Waterborne troops will just send off all of our warships again. Now, I am starting to work on... Uh, beer. I have filled out another four because I just went ahead and opened up the treasure saying Komi did all that stuff. So we're going to delete that because we don't need that. And there's two weapons we got left over because I imported too much copper. But that's not a problem. So let's just see. One, two, three. Let's see. So that goes down like that. One, two, one, two. Um, I'm actually going to... I'm going to delete. I think I'm going to have to... <coughs> Pardon me. I'm going to export Papyrus and I'm going to set these to not get anymore. I'm just going to set them to accept. Well, actually, empty. Or don't accept. I've just set them to accept. It doesn't really matter. And I'm going to move them all up one tile so I can put a connecting road right here. And uh, we're going to set this up as being our brewery industry. Um, our beer and all that kind of stuff is going to go right there. I've also got a yard, uh, a granary accepting fish, or getting fish, and we're going to have everyone feed, getting fed on fish at this lower level. Uh, this block doesn't seem to be getting fish, so I think what we're going to have to do is stop buying these items, just don't buy. I'm going to switch everything around. Once you're out of resources, it'll be fine, and pottery, that's just so easy, we'll just send that off. Uh, we're going to set you to not buy anything either, and we're going to switch these around and put them closer, because I don't think they're within range of this. Um, so I'm just going to let them, you are, but I don't think you are. And I think that's just because there's not enough desirability in this location. So let's just sort that with a, uh, you know, let's just put down the, the, the double courthouse like so. And that. The tall statue, that should help to evolve all of this into nice lovely uh, stuff. Are you out of stuff? Might as well be out of stuff, so we'll just uh, switch them around. Water supply there, bazaar there, and you are going to buy that. And once you're out of pottery, we'll do the, <coughs> the same to you, pardon me. So we'll empty out all this papyrus, which is good. And uh, once it's all out, then we'll be fine, I think. And then we can set up all of this into being a massive brewery industry. We will have a yard. Here, which is going to accept only barley. We're just going to have one barley uh, barley thingy. And I'll just have two here accepting beer. Like so. Now, I think that would be within range of all that, so we may not even need a getting yard down here, but I'm not going to... I'm not going to risk it because we shouldn't. So yeah, that's the plans for the city. We're just going to start providing beer, start to get everyone nicely evolved into the next level of housing. Now they've all got access to two types of food, or at least some sort of uh, second type of food, we should be fine. We'll plaza that up. 
Uh, some areas seem to be a little bit uh, straggly, but that's not a problem. So yeah, we're nearly at 5,000 people, we're not really fully evolving our houses yet, and we just need to keep on growing, that's all we need to do to win this mission, is just continue to grow the city, and I think we should be doing just fine. Let's keep on going. Okay, not long after cut it off, our troops returned from the war at Gaza, and we can now trade with at Gaza. Let's just have a look at that. Um, they sell incense and wood. They also buy papyrus, but I don't really see the point in that. That means that we don't actually need Kyrene now. Um, although I'm probably going to open up a trade with Kyrene anyway. Uh, we can now get four luxury good types. Incense, ivory, wine, and jewelry from imported gems. That's not too bad, but I was expecting them to sell us more than that, but... Maybe additional tributes will come out in time. I'm not too sure because I don't think uh, 2,500 flax and 1,500 linen import doesn't seem a lot to support the entire city because everyone's going to need access to mortuaries and linen. I don't think we have enough linen supply just yet. So um, I'm not sure about that. Now we do have enough troops. I don't think we're going to need much more than that to handle any uh, land troop requests. So we should be fine. We just have to get max on yet. You're out of pottery finally, so we'll just replace you. And we'll do that. There we go. So everything should be nicely fine now. We just need to set up our beer industry. We've got the unemployment to do it, but I don't have uh, this connection sorted out yet. And that'll just make it easier for them to get um, the barley in from Eonet. And Eonet wants to give us 700 luxury goods, and uh, due to diplomatic activity, we can now trade with Tyre. And they sell more. Okay, good. So we can import linen and incense from uh, Tyre, which means we don't really need Gaza because that's only for wood, and we can get wood from Encomi in any case. They only buy papyrus, that's the only reason to open them, but I can export enough papyrus to other places. We can't even make that much papyrus anymore. And we will be opening trade with Kyrene to get uh, another bit of uh, papyrus sale. So we're going to trade with Tyre to get additional linen, so that's 4,000 linen and 2,500 flax. I think that should be more than enough. But it may not be at hard difficulty, but we'll see. So yeah, let's just keep on going. I'll come back in if anything of interest happens. Our trade routes are starting to open up thanks to defeating the enemy at um, Gaza, rather. Oh, look, a hailstorm. Once again, we're getting a hailstorm event. So that is going to really push us over. That's going to destroy a bunch of ships. All of our fishing boats have died. I think most of them did. And we will have lost just a bunch of troops in our forts, which I'm going to have to retrain because I've just deleted the recruiter and all that weapons related stuff. Uh, a bunch of people would have just died as well, which is not too good. Now, you're set to get him, but I don't think anyone's set to buy beer. So where's that beer just gone? Oh, maybe the guy was, who was getting the beers just died, but that says it's a lot of hassle that. So I'm going to have to replace some of our boats. And our military as well, so that's not too good. I'm going to have to re-import copper. Uh, we also accepted that gift of luxury goods. I'm just waiting for that to be exported to here. But I think um, they're so busy doing everything else that they're barely buying anything now. Which is not too good. So yeah, let's just keep on going. Our papyrus is almost out, which is good. And uh, we will be able to sort out everything as well. So let's just put that there and set this back to getting again. And I think we should be doing just fine as well. So yeah, let's just keep on going. That hailstorm sort of screwed us over a little bit, but I think we can recover from it nicely. It allows us to start working on these things here too. Okay, so I'm just starting to work on our beer industry, and now we've just got a ran rather random request, I would say. A new trade route to tyres become available, and the City of Men of Fair request you said 700 papyrus. Why do you need papyrus? You've got more than enough. You even sell us papyrus. Right, so I don't know much about that, but never mind. Uh, so I have moved everything up just to allow this connecting road. It just means that if Earnet, when I open up the Earnet tribute, which I will need uh, to import flax and all that, uh, once I start to import uh, barley from them, they can just go straight down there instead of going round in a circle, which is going to waste time if they do that. Right, so setting this up like this is just better all around. Uh, we're just going to add another a couple there. I have uh, just sort of miscalculated this, that's okay. I can just do a couple of booths at the end and a couple of shrines or something just to keep the gods happy as well. Um, Considering that, that we're going to start losing on exports, I'm going to put down the city palace. Which I'm going to do right here. And that should be covered. I'm going to start putting down tax collectors in all of our housing blocks like so. Um, uh, it'll also cut down on unemployment. So, so let's just put this up to 
11% and increase this above uh, what we need. Oh, the wages fell at one point as well. Forgot to mention that, but the wages fell uh, back in 296 BC, so it's not a problem. So yeah, we're starting to boost our trade and uh, start to produce our manufacturing stuff and all that. We need to just evolve these into the next level, but I want to do that once we've got a big huge beer supply so we don't sort of use it all up at once. I mean, I suppose I could do the staggered um, buying thing, but I don't want to do that. I'm going to have to find some way of repairing my troops. I wonder if Cervic Kadim will become a trade route, I'm not too sure. Because uh, if I can only get copper from Encomi, that'll be a pain. Uh, let's just keep on going, there's nothing really to show now, and I'll just come back in if anything of interest happens. Okay, so Cervic Kadim asked for 1200 baskets of grain, and they have now opened up as a trade route. I thought they would open up as a trade route. They sell gems and copper, so I really shouldn't have opened up the trade to Encomi, but then again, I do need them for marble. So let's just open up this trade to Cervic Kadim. Then I can just set up a, a bit of a recruiter, a recruiter industry just over here. Like I was going to do before, and I can just do just a bit of a loop. I don't really need to do too much of one. I'll just do this. And then we'll do a weaponsmith right there. Academy in the corner. Recruiter. And this can just accept weapons. And then we'll have another one accepting copper. And then we'll just import that. And it's not connected to the docks, so we shouldn't have a problem um, importing this. Um, they'll just come in and import that, which is not going to be too problematic. Because they're not connected. It looks connected, but it's not. There is a gap. Um, also, our papyrus sort of started to run out. That's because I forgot that the hailstorm also kills these asps. So some of them did escape my barriers and ended up uh, starting to kill reeds. I've also gone ahead and made a well, put a wall around these asps, and I have opened up this here so they can go and get some additional reeds from there. But that is pretty much all the reeds on this map. We are tapping them all, and there are no more to be found. I don't think we could even import them. Nope. So. That is pretty much the level of papyrus production. We're just going to have to hope it stabilises in time. Uh, with taxes now coming in, I don't think we're going to really need to worry about exports of that. Uh, we'll just increase that just a little bit more. There we go. So now that we've got beer, what's our unemployment like? 4%? I think we could just evolve um, you guys. You could just get beer. We'll evolve you first because that's easier. And uh, we'll just put down the usual stuff here. There we go. So we'll start to evolve one of the housing blocks, see how well it goes up to the next level. We are going to have to find a place to import and produce linen. I may do that here, but I'm not too sure. I'm going to have to find a place for that. Uh, flax only comes by water trade route, so it is going to have to be somewhere that I can connect to a dock. And that's probably going to just be here or something. Um, one, two, one, two. Yeah, somewhere here. I'll probably just put it just as a side thing and I'll just have the flax coming by a connection through here or something. I'll do that. So yeah, we'll just keep on going. We've got plenty of fish. There's more than enough fish potential here that we can not worry about that. We'll start to import the copper, we'll train our troops and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, let's just keep on going. Okay, what's this? Uh, I did send off some beer to a great vessel to Ra and Menifer has apparently spawned 1600, uh, 16 blocks of marble and I can't accept it. So I think the game's tried to tell me that I need to start thinking about the monuments. Now, where am I going to put this? Um, you know, just put it um, there, because it really doesn't matter where this goes, to be honest. We'll just put it there. I'll just have a fourth dock right there, which should be fine. I've also set up this yard that was accepting pretty much nothing. I've changed it to another fish storage yard. Over here, I filled out the final block, and we're going to start importing flax. We're going to open up this tribute to Eonet. And import flax. We'll just import to maintain 1200 flax. That should be enough. And uh, they'll also import some barley if there's space, but I don't really want them importing barley. If they do, that's fine. And that's why we're going to have slow um, flax imports, and that's why we're going to have all these additional places selling us linen. We're just going to open up that entire trade route as well. So we can import enough linen direct as well as some flax to support everything. And our papaya supplies are going back up, which is good, but I don't think we're ready to export, are we? I think we are. Let's actually set this to export when there's more than a full yard, which means that they will always get from here, they will never take from here, which is what we want. And there's that marble. There we go. 
Now I am going to delete this position and I'm going to move it. Now the reason for that is because I want to put in a grain accepting yard here and I'm going to set a grain to explore when over uh, three, uh, 4,800 just as long as there's some up here you will get it essentially. I should set this to get maximum and then we'll put down the police station here and put the position there instead which should be fine. So yeah we'll start to fill back on grain. Uh, I think we've got enough grain uh, surplus now. I'm going to expand on our farms as well. We'll just put down, I mean we've got shit tons of unemployment. Yeah let's just do more of these, just more farms. It's not going to do any harm to the city by putting up all these farms. It is going to be a bit of a, no a nuisance trying to get um, the... Um, what? There's a bit of marshland right there? Jeez. That takes that whole farm. That's not very fair. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the irrigation around like this because the farms don't go any further in here so there's no point, you know, having the, the roads go that far so it's not a problem. There's not going to be as many farms here but that's not a problem. We have uh, 43 farms. That's more than enough to support our main city so we don't really need any more. We're just going to set it to empty. We don't need too much grain here. Um, although actually I may just leave that to accept just to make sure that there's enough grain surplus for these guys. So yeah we're through the worst of it. I'm, uh, in Immigration is quite slow. I think it's just because there's not enough, um, it's just going really slow now, which is what I expect at this level. Now our culture is held back by the fact that we don't have dentists, so I'm going to hold off on that for now because we don't need to do that. So yeah, let's just keep on going. At this point we just need to keep on uh, doing stuff here. That's get, get, get. And I think you're just set to accepting. Yeah, that's fine. So yeah, at this point I just need to evolve the city and I'm going to start planning out where I'm going to have my elite block. It's going to be somewhere around here. I'm probably going to have it butting up against this temple to Ra. But I think maybe at some point I will start to consider building the monuments like the Alexandria's library. Now, I don't remember what this requires. I'm just going to put it down and undo it. It needs 112 marble and 3,200 copper. Now we can get enough copper from imports, it's not a problem, I'm just going to delete that, we don't need it. And I'm just going to delete that. So we can import enough copper and I don't think it'll be a problem. I'll probably have an additional copper import over here somewhere, just to ensure that this goes uh, swimmingly. We've imported some flax to make some linen, which is good. So yeah, let's just keep on going and I'll come back in if anything of interest happens. I think the next thing I'm going to do is start working on the Alexandria's library monument, just so it's down and out of the way. Okay, more famine requested. Request for food. Baharia Oasis is in need of 1300 grain. We have way too much of this, uh, so we can just send that off. Um, I have got straw here that I might as well just sell. I mean, I've got no use for it right now. Literally no use, because I'm not really going to be selling any more bricks. Now, over here I'm starting to import copper. I've also got some luxury goods because I got some gems off of another uh, Men in the Fair beer request, so we send that off. I've also got marble, and I'm also going to import some copper over here. Uh, so let's just set our copper import to 1600. It's a bit extreme but that's fine. We'll just set this to a quarter. No more of that. And that will prevent any more copper going in there. They will have to import that over here which is fine. Now we are going to put down the Alexandria's library. Now these are very boring monuments but I am going to time lapse them because we might as well. And they are unique monuments that only built on these missions so we might as well. I mean I might as well. I did do it with the Dair El Medina was because they were really really boring and um, the process was, I explained it to you anyway so it's not a problem. Um, so I'm just going to wait for some copper to import over here and that's probably going to come from Servant Kadim and Enkomi which is not a problem and uh, more luxury goods that I really really don't want. You know I'll just accept them there because they will just get sold which is fine. There you go. Now we are still selling them which is fine. Manufacturer can just buy up luxury goods whenever it wants which will be fine. There you go, more luxury goods sold. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start time lapsing the construction of the Alexandra's library. I believe it requires, I think, carpenter services. So we have got some wood import, so at least that keeps that covered. I will have to set up an old area for those things. 
So yeah, let's just keep on going and we're going to time lapse the construction of Alexandria's library. And there we go, we completed Alexandria's library, and it says here, After much hard labour, the beautiful handcrafted doors of Alexandria's magnificent great library are ready to be opened wide to the scholars of the world. Indeed it is. That actually just looks so great. So, most of it was just basically uh, marble, and then there was a little bit of copper to put on that sort of roof colour, I think, on the end there. It looks so magnificent. You know what, I'm going to actually just put a loop round this because I think it looks so nice. We're just going to do that and then I'm just going to do some plaza work there. That looks so nice just having that right there. I think it was the right place to put it. Now building Pharos Lighthouse is going to be a bit more trickier because it's going to have to be up here. So this marble will not be imported here anymore. We're going to have that going up here. We're going to set up a little separate dock just for marble imports and we'll just do that there and then I'll just simplify that. Uh, looks as if we're having a bit of a crash uh, of our housing. Some of our houses seem to be running out of food. I don't think she's going off to go and get enough food, which is a problem. And that is because we don't have enough here, which means I need to stop grain export again because we can't support it anymore. So we'll just set this to accept and we'll let it run out. And that will stabilize this because they're running backwards and forwards trying to go to all these things here, which is not helping the situation. We need to fill up these granaries with grain. Instead of having them back and forth between all the storage yards of the city because that doesn't actually get food in the city. Now we're going to set this one to go and get, well they've got grain and fish, we're going to get them to go and buy pottery now, there should be enough there. Now we are going to have to start evolving heights, we did have a bit of a, we have a massive labour shortage, geez I think that's because of ageing. So what I'm going to do is a tactic that I wouldn't normally recommend, also we had a random fire here as well. I'm going to dis uh, delete the wet, uh, these, well, so now we're going to delete the water supplies out of these blocks and devolve them. That'll kick out a load of old people. Once all the old people are out, I will then re-evolve them, but that'll bring in a whole load of younger immigrants. Then we can just evolve everyone up to the right level. Now I am going to have to start thinking about the uh, industries of the cities. So we're going to not have any more straw. We're going to let the bricks run out because once all the bricks are gone, that'll be that. Just delete that. That'll save us some workers as well, not having this little industry because we don't really need it. We're not really selling that many bricks. Uh, let's just set this to not export any more pirates. We don't have enough. We also had a request from Athens, which didn't help. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let all the houses run out of people. Then we'll re-evolve them to get younger immigrants, and then I'm going to start working on our elite area over here. So we'll come back in once we restabilise the city. Okay, so I've gone ahead and started to plan out where I'm going to put seven palatial estates. This house will become a palatial estate as well. Now we have. Loads, well we did have loads of unemployment, but that's sort of getting evaporated by building all this stuff. Now how does this equate to 219? I think this will cover it quite nicely. So let's just put down 
a bizarre hero, you're just going to buy anything. Um, except lots of goods for now, because we'll, we'll, we don't have any, so it's not a problem. Uh, let's just put down the tax collector, a mortuary, and a school. So we've got all of those resources right here. That's what this connection is going to be basically for, is for when we have our, we have our fishing stuff here, but then it just leaves an empty space, so I have just filled this up with all the resources that are going to be needed for these guys. So they will evolve up into fancy residences very easily. This is just going to be like a dump for other buildings now. Senate House. You could fit in there quite nicely, and I will just surround you with statues, which will just make the place look a bit nicer and it won't make the area so ugly. We are going to have to start providing these guys with access to linen, I think, but let's see. All of you are struggling a bit with getting food, which is not too good, but we are going to get you to go and buy linen, and that will get you into fancy residence. Now you should be fine for all housing, so that should be fine. Now the only problem now is that we need to get our culture up. Now I don't think we have very many dance schools. We've got what was that, three dance schools? That should be enough. Um, what about beer? Beer's fine, we don't need to increase that anymore, so let's just do that. And our school. Now what's our culture? I think our culture's held by, by not enough booths, so we're going to have to really spam them out, I think. Um, Let's put down a booth over here. We don't really need much more linen production, so we'll just um, do some booths like so. And we could do the same here, we could just do two booths like that and that'll be fine. That's going up. Prosperity is not going to be a problem because as we provide these guys with access to the stately manor stuff, we should be fine. Now technically stately manors are higher as our palatial estates, so that's not a problem. So you're going to get access to your resources, and I'll just come back, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let these evolve, and I will come back in once we are ready to provide them with the second type of luxury good, and I'll just go over that again for anyone who can't remember that particular tactic that I've explained about in the past. Okay, so we've got stately manners, so this actually satisfies the goal of elegant manners, so that's fine. But I want better, I want palatial estates since I can get them. You know, there's no point passing up the opportunity to get palatial states if we have the opportunity to get them. Now, we are running a bit of a labour shortage, but I have solved that by just evolving all of these into fantasy residents. It's given us up to like 9,000 people. I don't even think half of these are full yet. So it's going to take a while uh, to fully uh, fill them. We've got another 650 people able to fill this up, and a bit more when it gets to the top level. So, remember. To get two types of luxury goods, you have to import from a distant trade partner that sells a different type of luxury good that's not jewellery. Now, we are making jewellery, which counts as one. We're importing gems from Celebrate Kadeem, and we are um, making them into jewellery, fire jewellery. Now, the second type of luxury good doesn't actually have to exist in the city as long as it's somewhere. In fact, we're going to actually just increase our jewellery production because it is a bit low here, like so. So... As long as the second type of luxury good is being imported, even if it's not actually going into a storage yard from a trade partner, it counts as existing in the city. What's our fish like? I thought it was looking a bit low, but it's not. It's not too bad. Actually, it is a bit low. Sorry. But never mind. That's not a concern. So, second type of luxury good. Now, we already have, like, tons of sources of this. We have um, incense, ivory and wine. Now, we're not actually going to import any of those, they're just going to be set to import. So we're going to go to import here. Now, we are exporting them, so this isn't allowed. We're going to have... Oh, that's why we've been running out of them. That's why, sorry. So we're going to set this to maintain to import zero. So none of these additional in types are going to come in. We're not going to get wine, ivory, or incense. However, the game's going to see that we have an import open and they're just going to evolve into, into modest estates. Straight up to Palatial Estate. And uh, we haven't actually imported any additional luxury goods, they have just been set to import and that's all that matters. So we've got seven Palatial Estates. More than satisfies this goal, it's going to set our prosperity through the roof, which is not going to be too much of a problem. Culture is pretty much our issue here. Because we are going to have to find some way of really increasing it. With 9,500 people in the city, this is going to require some sort of massive culture dump. Now I may need to set up another housing block, just a small shanty housing block, because our seven palatial estates will offset it anyway, and uh, that will help to boost our employees. Now, I'm not too sure about the monument, I think I'm going to have to go and build the monument first before I do anything else, but we have four blocks of 
uh, fast dresses, right through this canopic street and all this stuff going through here. It looks so nice with our palatial estate block right here. And uh, basically the only thing that's going to hold us back is building a zoo, which is not going to be a problem. But I'm going to have to spam out everything under the sun. Let's just increase our tax rate a bit and just um, really rake in the tax savings and stop the export of papyrus. Well, we'll stop the export of papyrus, which is good. Um, what are we even exporting? Nothing. Pretty much everything is taxes at this point. So we don't need to worry. Uh, why are we importing this much copper? We don't need to do that. Let's just drop that a bit. We don't need to import any more copper there. Okay, so that's just got our palatial estates. That's the crowning achievement of this city. I'm now going to go and start planning out to build the Pharos Lighthouse and I'll time lapse it and show it to you here on the, the video because why not? It's a unique monument. And there's Pharos Lighthouse finished. After much sweat and not a little shed blood, apparently, workmen have carefully placed the final block of marble for the wondrous Pharos Lighthouse. Already its tiny bright beacon is attracting traders from all over. Now, it was a very boring one, and all it was was really just a whole bunch of marble, and um, I'm just going to delete this entire shanty town, we don't even need it. I only set up here because this just speeds up getting it so you don't have to go Right, importing it here, they would have to go all the way around the city to get up there, which is not really very helpful. Now, we have hit 10,000 people by just this, so uh, this is giving you an idea of what you have to do for um, Cleopatra's Alexandria, which is not the next mission, but the mission after that. And I don't think we should have too many issues. Now, I need to set you to go and get that cork, that, well, that half of copper, because... It's sort of in an awkward place. Anyway, so we are short a bit of one employees, but we are um, just keeping everything together at this point. Now, unfortunately, the only problem is that I'm going to need to um, really increase culture. Now, I don't think, since we're not import exporting any more grain, I'm just going to delete a bunch of farms. We don't need this many farms, and it's sort of just getting in the way at this point. That's saved us some employees, but I might need to build more. Um, more housing, rather. Now, of course, that's only going to be a problem because that's going to affect our culture for mortuary coverage, which I don't think it should be affected because we've covered everyone with mortuaries. In fact, we haven't. Let's just put down a couple of mortuaries in these blocks and just boost our mor mortuary coverage, which should be enough. Let's just delete that work. Can't we delete it? Uh, so let's just set this to accept again because we don't need to get any more copper. So yeah, well, all I'm going to have to do now is we've got everything else, the ratings are all met. I just need to boost culture and I'm going to come back in when we're ready to put down the zoo because that's going to be the limiter to ticking over to 75 culture. Okay, so we're ready to win this mission as the game tells us we're going to have a perfect flood that we don't care about. We make 56,000 in taxes and that's basically 38,000 profit a year. We don't even export anything anymore. Um, what do we export? A teeny amount of pottery, that's just about it. <laughs> so really our export is just pottery, which we're not doing. Now we are crashing and burning because we are now running out of linen. I think what we need to do is just set this to import to maintain however much linen we can get. Let's just speed this up a little bit. 
because we can get linen from loads of places. We can get it from here and here, which covers our shortfall of linen import uh, from Unit, rather. So they'll cover and import a bunch of linen, which is going to send our cash down, but I don't really care. We also sell some stuff to Nkome, but I'm not bothered by the marble. Here's our main bustling city that supports the 10,000 people and our nobles. Here's our industry area. Here's all our library spam needed to get that culture up. Now, I bet you anything, I'm going to put down the zoo and it's going to stay stubbornly at 70, which I would hate. Now, we're going to need to put down a zoo right there. It is connected to the game meat supply, which is at least useful, as well as the straw. Let's just speed this up. Yes, it's done! Victory! Just one zoo is all we needed to get it up to 75. Luckily. And that was Ptolemy's Alexandria. So we had our uh, Pharos Lighthouse over there. I don't think you can see it, but it's on the mini-map, just up there. And then Alexandria's Library, right next to Alexander the Great's tomb. I think it looks spectacular. So, with that being quite a long video for Thomas Alexandria, it means that Cleopatra's Alexandria is going to be quite a short video because I don't need to show you much of the build-up. I've done it here, basically. So, that is Ptolemy's Alexandria. Let us proceed to end this mission and progress in the Cleopatra's Capital campaign. The metropolis of Alexandria now shines as a beacon to the world. Its great library is unsurpassed as a center for scholastic learning, and the towering Pharos Lighthouse is already one of the true wonders of the world. Indeed it is, and uh, we managed to erect it on Pharos Island. Unfortunately it does get, I think, attacked by an earthquake, I think, not a lot attacked. It does get hit by an earthquake and it's destroyed so it no longer exists today, but uh, it was a great thing. They built a lighthouse, and it lasted a long time. I think it was one of the earliest lighthouses they've ever built. Of course, Alexandra's library still exists to this day, but in a different state. 670,000 Debians, 10,000 people, max prosperity and all that. We've even got the palatial estates as well. So yeah, that was Ptolemy's Alexandria. If you want to click ahead to the next mission, which is Maritus, click the card on the screen to head there. It's quite a short mission, but it's a very difficult one. You'll find out by watching that video. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that fairly long Cleopatra mission, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.